Hello everyone, good day to all of you. I recently got a question asking if I could compare the finish on HK's anodization between their sand anodization, which is up here, and their older black anodization, because uh, allegedly HK does claim that their sand anodization does better under NIR. So that's what we're gonna look at, the visual appearance of all this. Of course, you can see it under the visible spectrum right now. Now, do note uh, one thing about this, this is a reanodization job by Black Ops Defense, so it's not authentic HK. This up here is actual black HK, HK416 upper, and then this is an actual sand, or formerly known as Rally 1000 MR223 handguard. So we're going to be mostly comparing this and this. It's just this is how I have everything mounted right now, so hence why things are as they are. But I'm just going to take a look, and this will somewhat later in the video broaden into a discussion just kind of on weapon finishes in general and understanding what works well under NIR and what doesn't. But as for this, I have informally done this myself and I didn't really see any issue, but uh, let's find out. So the lights are off and you can see I have the IR illuminator on with that red light right there. So taking a look first, I did actually forget to mention that I do have the HK iron sight back here. This is the G28 one, which is also the sand or rally thousand anodization. So this one in particular, I'm going to kind of move around the monocular here as well as the uh, rifle just a bit. This one is actually a pretty shiny anodization and it is an authentic one uh, but this one is kind of uh, it kind of has an issue with NIR which is a little bit hard to pick up because whatever dye Black Ops Defense used for this I had to refocus there for this re-anodization job here um, shows up a little brighter than it should you can see comparing it to the ADM4 lower, which I have on my 416 over here, it looks pretty similar because that one also has an issue, but if you look at the upper instead, if it'll get into focus here, you can see how different that looks between the two. Panning back over here to the G95 inspired build that I got. So there's the handguard right there, and you can just see it right side by side with the 416 upper and all of their black finish. Overall, it does I would say all of HK stuff does do quite well under NIR. Um, of course, you're going to be better off with the sand color. It's more of a natural tone. So both under the visible spectrum as well as under NIR, it's going to look more closely like your actual surroundings. Whereas this, if you especially look at the uh, MR556 handguard that I have up here, it, um, it just looks a little bit overly dark. Now, this is not the case with most anodization. That was the other thing now kind of branching out into just general gun finishes. For the most part, you do want to avoid anodization in the case of having good NIR camouflage. Because if you look, for example, so Schmidt Bender short dot up here, just anodized aluminum body. That thing is just glinting and reflecting a lot of light. Um, again, going back to another just regular, like I mentioned earlier, just regular anodized ADM4 lower. You can see that that also really shines way differently than everything else here, uh, but your best bet for a weapon finish is going to be either spray paint or Cerakote. So what I have here, this is my Wasser 10 with a Cerakote, just camo job on it. And you can see that this is just regular Cerakote, this is not their NIR compliant stuff, which I do want to show as well in just a sec. Even just the regular Cerakote, you can see how well this does with not reflecting compared to this right here. Um, but really, it's just dependent on, yeah, anodization can be done right, case in point with the 416 upper up here and the handguard and everything. But um, in general, just depending on what, whatever dyes they use, it will vary, of course, like you can see. Um, but Cerakote's always going to be a good bet. As I said, spray painting is going to be a good bet. It's worth keeping in mind as well that even if you Cerakote your rifle in a good camo pattern or you spray paint it, or you just have a bunch of kind of 50 shades of tannadize on it, 50 shades of FDE, that it's still going to have a very noticeable silhouette in a lot of cases, not always depending on lighting conditions, but it's worth just kind of keeping that in mind and even doing some basic keeling or having a sniper veil that you have partially over the rifle will help significantly to mitigate that, but I don't really see that talked about very much, so it's just worth keeping in mind, but I'm not going to go too much further into that right now because that would be a whole separate video. Interestingly, on the newest HK rifles, uh, at least the military variants, I'm not sure what they're going to be doing for the civilian market ones. But, um, for example, the 433, the G95K, the G95A1, those are all coming straight from HK with a NIR-compliant Cerakote. Um, I 
do wish I had one of those to kind of show. Uh, they also have a new M-Lock handguard that's coming out that's supposed to have that NIR serial code on it. So just interesting to kind of see how things are moving in that regard. What I have right here are three of Cerakote's NIR compliant swatches from top to bottom. I have Desert Sage, Desert Sand in the middle, and then ADF Light Brown on the very bottom. So the reason that I'd, I'm not really too sure if NIR compliant Cerakote is too much better than just regular Cerakote is because all, all three of these, they all look pretty similar. Interestingly, I do have some bronze ones in here as well, which I'll show these all on the visible spectrum later. But uh, interestingly, the bronze ones, uh, they actually end up looking darker under NIR than any of the rest of these do. I'm going to take all this stuff outside and show you this a little bit better in an actual more natural environment so you can see how these really compare and not just with an unnatural illuminator directly on it and uh, just so you can kind of get a better comparison of all this stuff. I wanted to start out by introducing everything on the visible spectrum again, just so you can see what I'm talking about. So a good point to start, I suppose, would actually be to talk about that NIR compliant Sierra coat. Uh, I did want to actually show how that looks on the visible spectrum. So I actually found out I have four swatches. I found one more that uh, I didn't realize I had. So what these are from top to bottom. So this top one here is desert sand, followed by ADF light brown, matte brown just below that and then Desert Sage at the very bottom here. You can see on the visible spectrum right now, these do have, uh, you know, they're pretty similar in color, but they are clearly distinguishable. I did notice when I was reviewing the NIR footage that these looked uh, kind of similar. They, I would actually say they had a bit of an issue with NIR emission, which uh, they're not supposed to. So I don't know if maybe these are supposed to be treated with something else when they're actually applied to the rifle or whatever else you are applying them to. Um, but either way, the swatches themselves look a little off. And also for the bronze colors that I was mentioning earlier that end up looking a little darker than they do to the naked eye, just if you're curious what those look like, then those are right there. Midnight bronze, burnt bronze in the middle, and then smoked bronze on the very bottom. How I'm going to test this, I'm going to switch to night vision in just a second. Uh, you can see the Wasser 10 right here is Probably a little bit hard to see because the camouflage sear coat on it is actually working kind of well here. Uh, and then the 416 MR556 kind of mashup of parts is over there, just that black blob you can see pretty easily. And then of course I'm holding the G95 inspired build that I have uh, with all the same parts and to preempt the comment that is probably waiting to happen. If you're wondering why there is no front sight on this, it's because the rear sight is only on here just for the test. Normally I'd have a different handguard on here, which uh, is set up appropriately, but yeah, that's why things are the way they are. So I'm going to switch now uh, to night vision. And the way I'm going to have it is I'm going to have IR illumination on about half of the frame and as little as possible on the other side. And I'll kind of walk between the sides of the frame. That way you can kind of get a feel for the contrast and how certain parts look and how, uh, how much of an issue the NIR remission is on a lot of these parts. So I'm going to switch to that right now. So starting with the tanidized G95 inspired build right here. IR illuminator is right about in this area as you can see. So I'm just gonna kind of walk back and forth just so you can get a good idea of how everything is working here. Keep in mind this is the one that has the uh, actual H key slimline handguard in the sand or rally 1000 coloration on it. And of course, the rest of this is uh, that tanidized from Black Ops Defense, which, as I said, could potentially be different given that they are most likely using different dyes in the anodization process. Uh, but if you do just kind of extrapolate what this handguard is doing, I know for a good example, uh, the 417A2 from HK, uh, from HK um, they had a really intense two-tone going for it, which I'll put up some pictures of that right now. And uh, so you can imagine that however this handguard and everything there is performing would be pretty similar to that. I'm going to switch now to the 416 here, the all black one. All right, same deal here, I'm starting in a pretty neutral location. And before I move 
to showing how the sear coated washer does, I'm going to pick up the tannadized uh, G95 Inspired again. That way, you can kind of compare both of these at the same time. Since again, these are both containing a lot of the HK anodization, just in different colors. So, moving more towards the IR Illuminator here. Last up for looking at how Coat itself does. So Wasser 10 with that camouflage Coat job on it. And then for my own curiosity as well, uh, I'm just gonna look at these NIR compliant Coat swatches, which I don't know if they'll really show up well in the camera. I have my white light on right now if you're wondering what this is, but uh, matte brown at the top, ADF light brown is the second one, desert sand, and then the last one here is desert sage. So I'll do, do the same thing, walking back and forth, and we'll just see uh, if this looks any different from how it did on the desk. All right, so I hope you all enjoyed this video. I'm personally excited to see how this all turned out because of course I haven't seen how this actually looks yet. As, as I said at the start, I only really did informal testing before this. So seeing how this actually performs in a more outdoor, more natural environment will be interesting. For my own conclusions on how this did, just based off of re-watching the footage myself, it looks like the part that I would personally say did the worst was that G28 iron sight, which I was not expecting because it's tannadized it's hk tannadized and uh you know their other anodized stuff did just find the sand handguard the full black 416 upper handguard and everything was fine it didn't have any noticeable issues with remission but that rear iron sight just glowed as if it's an actual ir glint square uh, one part that also looked like it had somewhat of an issue although this wasn't the part i was expecting to have an issue so i didn't really focus on it um, my flashlight which was hard to see because it's on the left side of the rifle, uh, that was kind of showing up brighter than it should have. And again, that's just tannadized. It's a cloud defensive rain 2.0 head on a legacy body, I should say. Uh, another part right next to it, the suppressor. Now that at least wasn't kind of glowing back at you, but it was showing up brighter than it should, which is again surprising because that is Cerakoted. Uh, and speaking of Cerakote, I'm still not sure. I was trying to do some research and I wasn't able to find what is going on with those HIR series Cerakote swatches. I still think that there's probably, that they probably look different when they're properly applied to an actual rifle. Like maybe there's something that they did differently when doing the swatch, just because it's a swatch and not a real application of it. That, um, it, yeah, it, because those actually performed worse than any of the other Cerakote. The short dot uh, definitely stood out quite a bit, and I've seen that on every LPVO I have. I haven't seen a single one that doesn't have that issue all the way from low-end optics all the way to the high-end. It's just they kind of have that uh, bit more of a shiny, reflective surface to them. One other part that was an issue uh, was the, uh, the little window in my mags, these HK Gen 3 mags. On the visible spectrum in the past, I have seen that little window there on these mags kind of reflecting more than they should. I'm not too concerned about it because I could cover it and really kill a lot of the reflection just with something like camo face paint. Just put a little bit of extra onto there and that'll fix the issue. Pretty much, you know, same sort of thing that you do with a wash face, for instance, uh, and other screens, etc. But uh, to see how much it reflected on the IR spectrum was surprising because it doesn't look that bad on the visible spectrum. It's just kind of noticeable there. So definitely significantly amplified here. And then the actual Cerakoted Wasser 10 didn't really surprise me there. That did well as I was expecting. I do wish I could have had some foliage to compare it to. That is something maybe I'll look into doing in the future. Um, it is spring right now, but kind of earlier spring, at least around here. So there's no foliage yet. But uh, as I said, that's something I'll look at doing in the future because kind of comparing how the NIR emission does 
compared to how it actually looks compared to leaves and all that uh, definitely can help to kind of gauge things but regardless hope this was informative if you have any other questions on this or if you have any other knowledge on nir remission and this sort of stuff on weapon finishes etc by all means would love to hear that too thank you all for watching take care and i hope to see you all in the next one